<clears throat> Good morning. The clock just when I got up here, it just bought nine o'clock. So I guess that's a perfect time to start. It's good to see everybody that's come out to be with us this morning. Uh, if you're visiting with us, we want you to know that we're very honored that you've come here to worship with us, um, as well as all of our members. We're glad that everyone's here this morning. Um, if you are visiting, there are visitor cards. If you don't care, fill one out. You can leave them in the tray out there by the communion uh, on your way out, and that would be good, or leave them in the pew, either one. Also, if you did not get a communion cup this morning, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, if you would, go ahead and um, you can get one before we uh, start our services this morning. You can make your way back and get one of those. Welcome to our viewers also on Facebook. And um, also we stream these on YouTube and also on Ben Loman Channel 6. Of course, we meet Sunday at 9. We have Bible study following that till 11 o'clock. Then Sunday night we meet at 6 o'clock. Then we have um, Wednesday evening Bible study at 7 if you'd like to take out your Bible, our reading for today will be Psalms 100, Psalms 100, verses 1 through 5. For a few general announcements we have this morning, um, the Middle Tennessee School of Preaching and Biblical Studies, that will be starting this Thursday evening. That will be at the West Riverside Congregation. And at 6 o'clock, Jim Boyd will be having a lesson on fit for the master's use. And following that, Garland Robinson will be doing a lesson on um, lessons he's learned from polishing, uh, um, from um, publishing, seeking the, the old paths. And that begins this Thursday. And I don't know how many months that'll be going on, but that's supposed to start this Thursday at 6. The Revival in America campaign, that will be held um, September 5th through the 8th. This is, I believe, through uh, Gospel Broadcast Network. It will be held at the shed where they do the Diana singing in Cornersville. But on the 7th, that's a Tuesday night, there will be, the van will be leaving from here at 4 o'clock, uh, taking a group over. So if you'd like to go to that, it will be back coming back around 10. And then that's the, the, the next weekend, the 10th and 11th, the Diana singing, if, I, if nothing changes, is supposed to be taking place as well. Visitation group four, don't forget your meeting this evening. We have a few youth announcements I'll go through. Um, Home Devo is this evening. That will be at the home of Jessica and Jason Adams. Um, drinks are provided. Girls bring desserts. I don't know how the boys got out of that. But, the, <laughs> but girls bring desserts. Boys, you just come. Um, the van will be leaving uh, right after services and we'll be coming back. So if you need a ride, then we'll make sure you can get there. Labor Day Youth Madness is September the 5th. That's just in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, you need to sign up by this Wednesday night so we can make plans to know how many to get there. And um, please see Jason about that. He's, we've got to have forms and all that filled out. Cost is $25. Um, this Saturday, East Main in Manchester, there is a dinosaur day for those that would like to go. That's uh, with Jeff Miller from Apologetics Press. Harvesting Godly Thoughts is September the 11th. That's at East Main in Murfreesboro. Um, this is for fifth grade and older uh, young ladies. And I saw a few moms signed up too, so if you'd like to go um, sign up for that by this Wednesday as well. September the 19th, our Hay program, Helping Edify Youth, the youth group does. They're going to be doing it at the old Philadelphia building. Why they picked the old Philadelphia building in September, that will be hot, but it will be a good time. So please uh, make plans for that. Also next Sunday, the youth-led services will be, uh, the evening services will be held here. Um, please try to make plans to come back and support our young men and also the younger young men. If you're not baptized yet, go ahead and be picking out a song, be practicing a prayer, get a reading together. So after we conduct our services next Sunday night, uh, you'll be able to come and you can come forward and do that. Uh, for our sick that we
for 732. <clears throat> we praise thee, O God. if you'd like to follow along in your books. Number 200. <clears throat>
Will you join me in prayer? Merciful God, loving Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that this morning we can sing hallelujah and that we can give you praises this day as you alone truly are on high. Father, we're thankful that all creation praises you. And as we're assembled this day for that purpose, we pray that our praise to you this day may be acceptable. And Father, we're thankful for every good thing that comes our way each and every day and help us always to appreciate what you have given. Father, we're thankful for the health especially that allows us to be here. And we're mindful that there are many who would like to be with us but are hindered in some way. And Father, we pray for those and especially for those who are suffering from illnesses and some from very serious illnesses. Father, we pray that you might be with them. We pray for healing as they are in need of it. And Father, we pray that, uh, uh, that, that their health can return to them. And we're thankful for those who have recovered and are back with us. Father, we know that you are great in so many ways. And Father, we pray that you would help us that as to make good use of the opportunities that we may have to glorify your name, that we may um, also effectively proclaim your gospel to those who are in need. And Father, in the ways that we have failed you and that we have sinned, we ask for your forgiveness. And we pray that you would help us that we might not sin. Father, we pray for those men who, over, to, who oversee the, the flock at this location. We pray for them for that they may have wisdom, they may have courage, and that we pray that you might strengthen us all in the faith. Father, we're so thankful for the blood of Jesus. And we know that the grace that is through that blood allows us to stand before you. And Father, help us that we might always walk in that grace, that we might see your face someday. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if you would have liked to mark in your books at this time, the Song of Encouragement would be number 337 after the lesson. <clears throat> 337. Then to prepare our minds to protect the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 764. <clears throat> Excuse me, 764. When we
before we begin, is there anybody that has not got the communion, please raise your hand and uh, somebody will bring that to you at this time. To prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, I'd like to ask everybody to turn to Isaiah chapter 53, and I'm going to read about the prophecy of Christ coming. I'm going to read the first six verses, and then we'll pray for the bread. It says, Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground, he has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He's despised and he's rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not even esteem him. Surely he's borne, all, he's borne our griefs, he's carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's bow our heads. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for our Savior and your Son, for the love that he had to come to this earth and to hang on the cross, to, to have a hope for us so that we can have our sins forgiven. As we partake of this bread, Lord, we're reminded of his body. May we be taken back to that cross to to visually see the pain that he was going through and the things that he had to do so that we can have our sins forgiven. As we partake of this, we hope that we all do it in a worthy manner. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. finish the rest of the chapter now verse 7 says he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent so he opened not his mouth he was taken from prison and from judgment and who will declare his generation for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people he was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had no violence, there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. <clears throat> he has put him to grief, and when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. And by his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, but he made intercession for the transgressors. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Heavenly Father, we come to you again knowing that we need you and we need our Savior in order to get in order to make that home in heaven. As we partake of this blood, we're reminded of the, the blood that, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, Lord, we're reminded of the blood that Jesus shed on that cross to save our sins. We want to take our minds back to that cross and remember his sacrifice. May we all do this in a worthy manner. It's in Christ's name. Amen. Bow with me again and we'll uh, pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this country that we live in. 
and for the things that we earn in this world. And we know those earnings are needed in order to spread the gospel, to do those things, the work that's needed on this earth for you. As we give back a portion of that to you, we hope that we give with a cheerful heart, knowing that the monies that are used are to further your, your kingdom and to spread your word. May we all give with a cheerful heart. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Reading this morning is taken from the book of Psalms 100, 1 through 5. It says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. It was probably about 1960 or 1961 that I remember the first time being in Bible class. Now I was in Bible class when I was an infant, but I can remember sitting in the class of Sister Verdi Collins at the Bethel Church of Christ in Vernon, Alabama. And I can remember Sister Verdi teaching us young people to memorize the 23rd Psalm and the 100th Psalm. And uh, I can still recite those today. Those were both taught to me by Sister Verdi. And I believe everyone in the class memorized them and it became a part of who we are. As you and I think about studying with the shepherd, the book of Psalms and the great lessons in it, we've been studying for the last couple of weeks a series of lessons, and in fact, we've looked at the imprecatory, those curse Psalms. We've looked at the penitential Psalms where there is sorrow expressed for sin, and to this morning we're going to talk about the praise Psalms. As a person studies through the book of Psalms, there's so many different ways to study it. But I find that these have been helpful to me, at least. And I believe that they will perhaps be helpful for you as well. We're going to follow the same pattern that we have used in our previous lessons. And that is we're going to begin with some explanation. Then we're going to talk about some examples. And then finally, an exhortation from these three. Let's talk about for just a minute the idea of the word praise. The English word praise comes from the word that originally meant to put a price on something. To use as the root word of the English word appraise, to give some value to it. You may have had your home appraised and someone will tell you that the value of your home is this amount of money. Other people may have had their jewelry appraised and someone would say, this is what it is worth. If you and I praise God, we're saying this is what God is worth to us and what he means in our lives. If you go through the book of Psalms, the term praise is found 187 times. This past week, I have read every one of those 187 several times because I wanted to prepare this lesson the very best possible way that I could. I will tell you that there are five different Hebrew words that are used to use for the English word praise, and the most common of those is the word hallel. Now you can say, well, what does that mean? It means praise. In fact, the compound word, hallelujah, we sang about it just a few moments ago, means praise the Lord. Now, by far, that's the most common term that the Holy Spirit used through David to describe to us how we value God. Some of the psalms that are praise psalms are individual. And as we go through some of the examples, you will see that. David himself expresses appreciation 
and thanksgiving to God for what God has done for him individually. And then there are times when he will take and he will say, this is us as a congregation, as your people, how we offer praise to God. Much like we did just a few moments ago, as we all sang together, hallelujah, praise the Lord. There are some that are declarative and some that are descriptive. When you talk about the distinction between those, you're talking about a person who says, God is great. Or the song we sing, How Great Thou Art. And then there are some that are descriptive in the sense that they tell us all that it is about God that makes him great. After reading many of these, it is my conviction that most of them are a combination of the two. God is praised for both his actions and his attributes. His actions, what God does, how he has worked in this world, what he has created, what he has made, but then who God is as a part of his nature, the fact that he cares for us, that he loves us. He provides for every need that we might have. And it became a practice among Israel to sing these psalms as a means of expression of appreciation to God. In Ezra chapter 3 verse 11, And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever toward Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout, when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. There was so much excitement when they returned from the captivity and they began to lay the foundation for that restored temple. They were thankful to God that they were back now in the homeland. They were back now seeking God's mercy and God's grace. And they shouted praises to God. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 7 through 9. On that day, David first delivered this psalm into the hand of Asaph and his brethren to thank the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. There's so much to be said about these psalms. How that they became a part of the memory of Israel. And they are a part of the memory of those of us who are Christians because we look and see what God has done and we sing his praises in so doing. Examples. There are far too many psalms to consider in this lesson this morning. In fact, if you want to know, you can ask Brother Jason how much time this past week I've spent just reading, pondering over these psalms. I would find myself reading and say, okay, I'm going to use that one. And then after about four or five pages, I go back and say, well, I can't use that one and this one too. So I've got to be able to pair that number down. And then I still found myself with a whole ledger pad full. And then I said, well, what I'll do, I'll just take some of some of the greatest of the valuable, valuable ones. And even then, I feel like I have not scratched the surface of this. This study has been good for me. I hope that it is good for you. Let's begin to explore some of these. Psalms chapter 8, and I'm going to have them on the screen, but I do recommend you get your Bibles because I think you're going to want to make some notes. You're probably going to want to underline some words as we go through some of these. And I'll listen to the very eloquent, beautiful words of David. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. 
Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength. Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of your hands, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor. Now, I've got to stop at this point. I know that it goes through verse 9. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name. The name of God. Even to mention the personal name of God is to give him glory and honor the I am that I am. The all existing one. How great is God's name in all of the earth. How great is it to the point that even children will cry out with praise to God. But notice with me verse 3 through verse 5. When I consider the heavens... Talking about the work of God's hands, the moon and the stars. Have you ever walked out and looked up in the sky on a dark night and been able to observe all those little dots of light, realizing that many of those stars are bodies of light just like our sun? Many of them may even be brighter than our sun, but they're so far away God made every one of them. And as you ponder that in your heart, what am I, who am I, that God has been mindful of me? Why did God place man as the crown of his creation? You say, oh, I know, Genesis 1, 26. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Yes, that's what makes us special. But think about that statement itself. Created in the image of God. God, why did you put us in such... A privileged place. Now keeping on, he said, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. God put man in a position of dominion. And for that, we stand and we praise God and we say thank you for what you have done in creating us, who we are and what we are. Made in God's image. Go to chapter 9 with me. We're just going to take two verses of chapter 9. God's marvelous works. I will praise you, O Lord. With my whole heart, I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. With my whole heart. That phrase, the whole heart, is used quite often by David. It encompasses everything that's a part of the spiritual heart of man, man's will, man's emotions. And David is saying, with everything within my being, everything that's rational within me, I give praise to God. Why? Because of God's marvelous works. Marvelous works. He said, I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Now let's go to Psalm 19. Probably two or three pages in your Bible. Psalm 19. This is one of my favorites. It reflects God's creation. 
He begins by saying, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There's no lang- speech, nor language, nor voice where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Again, David is able to look up. And what does he see? He says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament, everything that's in the sky up there, the atmosphere, that declares his handiwork. The beauty of all of that But look at the way verse 2 captures this. Day unto day utter speech, night unto night reveals knowledge. Doesn't matter whether it's day or night. There's great proof of God there in the heavens. And in verse 3, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. It doesn't matter if you're here in the United States or if you're in the Middle East or you're even in the Far East. All of those miraculous, marvelous things of God's creation are clearly seen. In fact, I'm reminded of what Romans chapter 1 says. When he's talking about verses 19 and 20, and he says, The things that are made declare his everlasting power and divinity, Godhead. As you and I look at that, there's a, a marvel of the God we serve because of all the creation and everything that we see about us. Now go with me to chapter 34. Let's look at verses 1 through 6. Verses 1 through 6. As a person sits down, and as I tried to do this past week, I tried to take every one of the praise psalms that I could find, which, by the way, is just about every other one, And you read through them and you ask the question, for what reason does one praise God And uh, in these passages? And one of the ones that just pops out at you is the way God takes care of people. Look with me now. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried out, And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. If you'll notice with me, verse 2 and verse 5, or excuse me, verse 6. The humble, the poor. You know, one of our problems here in this life is, is we have too much. We have more than we need In fact, we have many times more things than we can take care of. Most of us just have a great abundance. But you imagine yourself having little to nothing, being humble and dependent. And he talks about that man can look to the Lord and knows God hears him. I've been amazed several times in the period of years that I have been preaching about the psychology of people. When things are going very well financially, they're going well in people's lives, everybody is just more interested in themselves than they are the Lord. But you take a great event that humbles a person, and to whom do they go? They go to the Lord. You know why they go to the Lord? Because he's the only one 
that can really provide the answer. All the religion that people got after 9-11, they saw themselves as vulnerable. To whom are we going to go? We're going to go to God. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise is going to be continually in my mouth. Verse 3, magnify the Lord with me. We're not saying, you praise the Lord, and I'll, I'll sit over here and on the side. No, let's do it together. Psalm 65, verses 1 through 4. Psalm 65, 1 through 4. This is perhaps what I think is David's greatest appreciation, having studied the penitential psalms last week and the thankfulness that David experienced when God forgave him. Here's what he says in chapter 65, verse 1. Praise is awaiting for you, O God, in Zion, and to you the vow shall be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you provide atonement for them. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. I want you to think about what's in David's mind. Psalm 122, verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go up into the house of the Lord. Why did David take so much thrill in going to God's house? Why was that temple so important, so valuable, so precious to him? It's where he got to go and get forgiveness. Notice how it's in Zion, verse 1. The vow to be performed. The God who hears prayers. Verse 3. You will provide atonement for them. When a man complied with the directions that God gave him and he came and he offered that sacrifice, you know what God did? God forgave. As he talks about that holy temple, those of us today have a temple, but it's not in Jerusalem. We have a temple, but it's not made with hands. We have a temple, but it's a holy spiritual temple that is the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you and I can be a part of it. We can be in it. And there's where forgiveness is found. And when we sing the songs of praise, we ought to be singing them realizing God allowed me to become a Christian. He allowed me to be a part of his church. He allowed me to be a part of this great spiritual temple that offers up spiritual sacrifices to the Lord. Psalm 95 and 96. I told you Psalm 19 was one of my favorites. Psalm 95 is perhaps the next of the great psalms. You can't take 95 without at least looking partly at chapter 96. And again, I would love to spend the whole time maybe just taking these two chapters. Verses 1 through 5. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout to the rock of our salvation. Shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. The picture here of God's creation and talks about the heights and the depths. Let's go on into chapter 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. 
Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. He's talking about verse 2, singing, proclaiming the news of his salvation. Good news. I don't know about you, but every time I turn on the television, it's depressing. Somebody shot in Nashville. Floods west of Nashville. COVID is raging. Hurricanes threatening. This world and all that is in it has very little value to offer. But oh, there's a God in heaven who is so powerful that he made everything. And he has good news. The good news is this world's not all there is. There's a great place awaiting those who are righteous. A place where there'll be no sickness, no sorrow, no uh, storms of life. But you got to keep going on reading. Verse 7. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Carefully read verse 11. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and all its fullness. Let all the field be joyful and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the wood shall rejoice before the Lord. Doesn't matter whether it's what you see in the heavens or what you see here on earth. The power and the majesty of God can be seen. Psalm 100, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Come before his presence with singing. God made us. We didn't make ourselves. Humanism says... Man is the measure of all things. Humanism says we look to ourselves and not to God or not to some supernatural being. That's absolutely foolish. You didn't make yourself. I didn't make myself. There's no set of natural circumstances that can explain why I'm here. Except for the fact that God's divine creative power brought us into this existence. Be thankful to him. Bless his name. The Lord's good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Psalm 111 verses 1 through 10. I'm going to specifically key on verse 9. Praise the Lord, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great study by all those who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness endures forever. He's made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He's given food to those who fear him. He will be ever or ever be mindful of his covenant. I just want to draw attention to the fact of verse 2 it says... The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. That means I'm sitting and counting my blessings. I remember a few years ago, a foreign student had come to study in a preacher training school and they asked him, they said, what are you going to miss most going back home? His answer was toilet paper. I don't think we realize how blessed we are. 
You just think about things that we enjoy, the air conditioning, your little electronic devices, mine as well. The fact that we're able to arrive here at services in the dry in a short amount of time rather than to going out and hitching up a horse and buggy or some other means of transportation or walking. Oh, there's so many things that we have that we ought to be thankful for. He has declared to his people the power of his works and giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are verity and justice. All of his precepts are sure they are, stand fast forever and ever. They are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome, or if you're reading the King James, holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and a good understanding. Have those who do his commandments, his praise endures forever. Psalms 146 through chapter 150. And I could have just stopped and just studied those chapters. Every one of them began with the praise the Lord. Let me just focus your attention. I know I'm out of time. Chapter 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise his angels. Praise him all you hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him you all you stars of light. Praise him above the heavens and the waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he has commanded and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea creatures in all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all you peoples, princes and you judges all of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name is alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven, and he has exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all of his saints, of the children of Israel, a praise near to him. Praise the Lord. And you say, I think I remember that song. And it is a song we sing. Let them, give, let them praise Jehovah. Now, very briefly, I feel like I would not do right if I didn't just pause at the end and say, here's what it means or should mean to us. Praise arises from a joyful and a thankful heart. I should look at myself and say, am I thankful for what all God has given me and done for me? In James chapter 5, verse 13 is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Joy in the heart. Reading the psalms is a powerful reminder of those blessings. So easy to forget. Chapter 103, 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. 116, 12, what shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? Look what God has done, and should I not be eternally thankful? And whether the, we hear, others should be able to hear us praise God, whether it's from our lips singing them, or whether it is speaking them. The book of Hebrews says in chapter 15, verse 13, Therefore let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. What you and I say should every day reflect that. And then finally, we point out that this points to our loving and respecting and appreciating God. And David wrote these songs by inspiration to help us to do that. And I want to encourage you, take some time this week. 
Read the Psalms again. Learn the lessons that are found there. The best way you can appreciate God is to do what he tells you to do. We're going to sing the song, Is Thy Heart Right With God? And if you need to become a Christian because you believe in Jesus, repent of your sins, confess your faith in him and be baptized, or if you're a Christian walking in the ways of the world and you need to come home, the Lord loves you. He's provided the means of your salvation. Would you come as together we stand and sing? and every one of you. We've got a good crowd with us this morning and we're glad that you chose to be with us here and to worship at Bobby Branch Church of Christ. We know that we have those that are watching from Facebook and YouTube and perhaps on Ben Loman and we're glad that you joined us. We hope if you're in our area and that you would like to, we would encourage you to worship here with us in person. I do have just a couple of announcements uh, to add to Brandon's um, the adult class that meets in the fellowship room this morning uh, will meet here in the auditorium uh, this Sunday morning just for this one occasion. And also, I guess to help clarify, uh, the shower for Ezra and Abby uh, will be this afternoon from 1 to 3 uh, in the fellowship room. Again, that's this afternoon uh, in the fellowship room from 1 to 3. Last thing I'd like to remind us, I don't think we would be remiss if I didn't mention it, um, and I think all of us are aware, uh, unfortunately, the, the COVID uh, virus is, unfortunately, is growing once again. Uh, if you've watched the news, even our local community, our cases have increased. And sadly, uh, there are people who are passing from this disease once again. And so I want to encourage all of us, first and foremost, to be prayerful in our daily lives. For those affected by COVID, for those caregivers who are caring for those uh, and their families who are affected by that and pray for a resolve from God, whatever that resolve may be. Uh, we do not know if the resolve from him is that we'll be dealing with this for years or for just a few more months, but we'll put it in his hands and, and pray that he will be with us. Along with that, I would remind all of us that as the virus does increase, sometimes we do have to take actions. Uh, not all of them are pleasant, uh, as we've changed over for our communion packets and, and uh, as we wore masks in the past and, and had social distancing and so forth. I would encourage us all to be mindful of that, and especially as this increases, we may have to be even more strict about that in ourselves. Not for ourselves, 
but for each other. And that's really what we're trying to do is protect each other, uh, you know, as we try to navigate through the virus. We'll have one more song and a closing prayer. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this day and its many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity we've had to come together to hear and to study and to worship thee. Father, we pray that our worship has been acceptable in thy sight. Father, we know of those that are sick, those that have lost loved ones. We pray that you will be with them and continue with them and bless them in this time of need. Father, now go with us to our homes. Bless us. Keep us ever safe. Bring us back to the next point in time. Christ's name. Amen. Amen.